You know, if I'd spent about one-tenth of the energy that I spent on figuring out magnetism and field theory, I could have figured out the stock market and could have been sitting on the beach in the Bahamas somewhere. <laughs> That's not a joke, actually. Um, can't take it with you when you go. i much rather know the secrets of the universe, honestly. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't mind taking a week off somewhere. You know, the literally thousands of videos that I have on magnets and magnetism and field theory. Um, it's interesting that I can actually, because I won't make a video if I don't feel like it's worthwhile, sum up what a magnet is and magnetism very simply in this video. And I'm going to try to make this quickly. That way I can encompass the entire sphere and I've lectured, given a lecture on what uh, a magnet and magnetism is and it received standing ovation actually and people kind of actually chased me around uh, for a few days uh, after giving that lecture. Uh, it was kind of weird. Uh, some people like uh, that sort of uh, adoration. I'm actually not one. I will point out to you before starting this video and making this video extremely simple in understanding the nature of what a magnet is and magnetism that no branch of science, not my opinions, hardcore fact, has ever defined the word field and ever explained what magnetism is. They have not. I have every book ever written on magnetism, including the really, really, really old ones, and you won't find the answer anywhere. And go ask any PhD professor of physics, and you will not get an answer. The guy that everybody considers to be a genius, um, Feynman, He's actually sitting in a high back chair and he's got his legs crossed and he fidgets and wiggles like a frog on a hot plate. He's asked for eight minutes, you know, well, what is this thing, magnetism? He's asked this very seriously by an interviewer and it's thousands of copies of it all over YouTube. It's about seven minutes long, I believe. Type in Feynman explains magnetism. I dare you to watch that. And he talks about an old lady slipping on the ice and he has no clue. He would actually be considered wiser if he said, you know, this is one of the large secrets I'd like to know the answer to, but I just don't know. That would have been the wise answer, but instead he fidgets and wiggles and he basically tells the guy who questions him, it's like, well, no, what is magnetism? He's not being facetious. And he just basically said, well, it's just, you know, I could explain it to you, but you're not smart enough to understand it. That's basically what he says, so. Um, human beings suffer from a conceptual default and like we like to pigeonhole things like ice, water, and steam are all, of course, uh, water, one thing only, different um, modality expressions of one molecule, i.e. water. Same is true of magnetism and dielectricity. To refer to magnetism, this word, magnetism, uh, relative to dielectricity is like talking about ice versus water. Uh, magnetism, I will be very simple and make this video very simple for people to wrap their minds around it. You be the first people in the face of this earth to understand the most fundamental force in the universe, that magnetism is actuality, yeah? Where dielectricity is potentiality. The loss of potentiality manifests in actuality. So magnetism would be analogously ice or steam, take your pick, and dielectricity would be the fundamental substrate, i.e. water. Don't take that analogy too far, but magnetism is the dielectric field. In other words, the extrinsic attributional manifestation, the loss of that potentiality, which manifests as actuality, kind of like a, a log in my log burning uh, stove up in the cabin is a piece, of, a piece of potentiality. You know, it contains within it, that log, the potential to create heat if you burn it. So the actual flames emitted from the log would be the actuality or the magnetism. And the log itself before being burned would be the potentiality. That's making it really simple. By the way, a field is just an ether perturbation modality and magnetism is the dielectric field. The extrinsic attribute, i.e. the actuality of the loss of energy of what is potential. Loss of energy potentiality manifests as one thing and one thing only all throughout nature, and that is actuality. A magnet is a point source object. Yeah, point source objects are the source of every fundamental thing that we enjoy in technology. Lasers, for example, are a point source object. Um, 
what actually defines a magnet is qualitative, not quantitative. If this were a magnet before it became a so-called magnet, it is quantitatively 100% identical. The only thing that has changed is its qualitative nature. So a magnet is qualitative, not quantitative. What defines them, uh, whether it be samarium cobalt, ferrite, neodymium iron boron, makes no difference makes no difference whatsoever. It is a qualitative object. A magnet, to give a simple analogy, is a field magnifier. I don't know if you ever grew up like young boys did. They had magnifying glasses. We'd burn grass and, uh, you know, we'd uh, play God with our magnifying glasses. Of course, the larger the magnifying glass, you know, the more powerful it is. Uh, you can actually get a Fresnel lens. You can literally melt rock. There's thousands of YouTube videos of something putting up a Fresnel lens about yay big on a wood frame and you just flip it over and point it and get the focal point directed on a rock. It will literally create lava. Well, it'll start shooting off sparks and rock chips will fly off. It's like, well, the only thing you're doing is you're creating a point source. Are you not? You reach the focal point, you focus in on that rock or whatever it is, burn wood, literally create lava. Um, burn the rock. You're creating a point source. Like, well, it's the same light that was always there. What is a magnifier doing? It is creating a point source. It is focusing in the energy of that light or EMF upon something. A magnet is an inside out AC generator. To define an AC generator, I'll actually do that in this video too, as well as defining a magnet. An AC generator is an inside out magnet. Every magnet in the magnetic field, of course, is have extra to it. The exterior of the loss of energy or inertia of the dielectric. An AC generator is the inversion of the magnet, where the magnet is on the inside and the dielectric reflector is on the outside. You actually vary that, and, a ma and an AC generator is just an arch form, and it doesn't generate any power at all. It actually manifests it. You actually change it with uh, variation due to time. You introduce a temporal component. You turn the magnetic field against the dielectric reflector, and you actually have the manifestation of power. So a magnet is basically an inside-out AC uh, manifester, which is what they should be called, rather than an AC generator. A magnet is analogous, once again, to a magnifying glass that has its focus at the dead center. Once again, we're talking about a point source object. This causes a multiplicative effect on the ether of the ether, not on the ether. I should use be very, very specific not on the ether, but of the ether, ab extra to the magnet, because the magnet is a qualitative object. If the magnetic field, uh, <clears throat> i.e. the magnetic field around the magnet, but the conjugate field ab extra to the magnet is not merely magnetism, but also to dielectricity. This is why people get confused. They think, well, what's happening outside of the, the magnet is the influence of the magnetic field. But if you actually look underneath the uh, magnetic uh, field viewing film or underneath the supercell, you will see a conjugate field. You'll actually see the magnetodielectric hyperboloid. You'll see a black hole at one pole and a black hole at the other pole. This is the hyperboloid of increasing inertia and acceleration towards the plane of inertia. But everybody is only fascinated by the magnetism around a magnet. They're kind of invisible, like children to the puppet master, like a bunch of kids just see the puppets on a puppet play, like they see the magnetism and this is what fascinates them of course, but what's really important and what's really going on is not only the strings attached to the puppet, but the hand and the puppeteer above it and this is the dielectric that human beings are so, just like children, so blatantly blind to. So this creates a multiplicative field effect. Just like this laser, even though this is a weak laser, I actually have a 5 watt blue laser, which is really, really, really dangerous. You actually have a multiplicative effect here, where this is just putting out, I think, like 150 milliwatts. 150 milliwatts in the case of an LED is really, really dim. But I mean, this is powerful enough to permanently uh, damage the back of your eye. It's a multiplicative effect. What's a multiplicative effect in a simple analogy? Well, the Romans had an icon for it. They called it the fesches, where they'd actually take multiple sticks, bundle of sticks, and they were bound together. You could break uh, one stick or a few sticks, but if you bound them all together, they become unbreakable, essentially. So this is a multiplicative effect. Instead of say, well, I can break one stick, so I can break five sticks, so I can break 10 sticks, which yes, you can, but you bind them all together, you have the collective working in unison. 
to create a phenomena which is way more powerful than each are individually. So it doesn't become 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, say 10 sticks, so you have a, a power of 10. No, when you actually bind all 10 together, the multiplicative effect is that you have something, say, the power of 30, say, to the power of 40. Uh, a 5-watt laser, for example, a very, very simple analogy, is infinitely more powerful and dangerous than a 5-watt light bulb. What's the difference? 5 watts is 5 watts, right? What's the difference? 5 watts is 5 watts. Well, yes, it is, but when you create a point source field, you have something that operates at a multiplicative factor. And this is exactly what a magnet is because a magnet is a qualitative object, not a quantitative object because quantitatively it's identical before it becomes a magnet as it is after it becomes a magnet. So a magnet in simple is nothing other than a field laser, i.e. point source field phenomena. Both a laser and a magnet are point source field objects. A black hole, by the way, analogously, is a point source object. It's not a hole, and the only reason people call it black is because uh, ma uh, mass and magnitude have been vanished from this universe because this is where uh, dielectricity has overthrown magnetism's ability to keep it within the visible universe. The only reason anything has a spatial footprint of XYZ dimensions of Cartesian value, well, it has a mass and magnitude of uh, one solar unit, in other words, the size of our sun, was well, completely vanished. This is a supermass with no magnitude, which human beings can't wrap their brain around, but it becomes really, really, really simple. This is where dielectricity has literally overthrown magnetism's ability to keep that within the visible universe. It's a point source. So three perfect examples of point source field objects with fascinating phenomena. Black hole, a laser, and a magnet. Fascinating. By making them point source, they become a multiplicative field phenomena with fascinating, amazing uh, phenomena and attributes. Everybody knows that the phenomena of a black hole is fascinating. Everybody knows the phenomena of a laser is absolutely fascinating. There's not a single person on this earth that is impressed by a 5-watt light bulb. But I don't know if you ever flicked on a 5-watt. Uh, they make them as little reading lights. They're not really light bulbs. That's too weak for a light bulb. Nobody is afraid of or impressed by a 5-watt light bulb just for reading a book really, really close. Yeah? Pull it over your head or on top of your head, a little lamp, 5 watts. Everybody is impressed by the danger and the power and the brilliance, really quite dangerous, of a 5-watt laser especially if it's an ultraviolet 5-watt. I have a blue 5-watt laser. Really powerful, really impressive, really wicked. Get it? 5 watts and 5 watts. Nobody's impressed on Earth by a 5-watt light bulb. Nobody, not even one person. Everybody on Earth, as long as they have a, you know, they're alive, is impressed by a 5-watt laser. What defines that 5-watt laser? Well, it's a point source field phenomena. It will say, well, it's coherent light radiation. Well, attributionally, that's correct, but what a laser is is a point source object, which is exactly what a magnet is. Before a magnet becomes a magnet, there is nobody on Earth that is impressed by it. It's just a ceramic lump, whether it be samarium cobalt, neodymium Meyer boron, ferrite. Nobody on Earth is impressed by it. But you turn it into a magnet, and you've only changed its qualitative nature. Well, the entire Earth is fascinating. They love to play with it. They love to ponder about it. It's the exact same thing, point source objects. So a magnet is a field laser, i.e. Right? point source field phenomena. Both are point source objects, black hole, all three. Black hole, laser, uh, a magnet. Laser, of course, is an EMR, uh, an EMR, electromagnetic radiation point source, with power made multiplicative to outside of the laser. And, of course, you have a, not in the case of an LED laser, by the way. There's a reason why LEDs are so bad for your eyes, actually, because it's quasi-point source light. LEDs are bad for your eyes. I know why everybody loves them, because they're super cheap, they last forever, and they take little power to power them, but LEDs are bad for your eyes. So, A magnet is a point source object with this multiplicative power outside of the magnet. Um, a magnet is a construct of field interference of the conjugate field of the magnetic and the dielectric, respectively the torus and the hyperboloid. Yeah? 
Something is only called a magnet because it carries a field of influence ab extra to the magnet itself, wherever it goes. A magnet is not emitting anything. Because it is a point source object, it is creating a, uh, a conjugate field of the ether itself because magnetism, dielectricity, gravity, all of these are one and the same thing, like ice, water, and steam, which any child should recognize that. If, you know, say a child of, I don't know, when does a child recognize ice, water, and steam are the same thing or are taught that? It's like, it's the same stuff. You're looking at three different phenomena that are one thing. Same is true of dielectricity, magnetism, gravity. Electricity is just the uh, consubstantiality of magnetism and dielectricity, or phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. So electricity is this, uh, this uh, dual field phenomena of uh, dielectricity and magnetism. So. Magnetism is constructive interference of the conjugate field. Something is only called a magnet because it carries with it this field of ab influence ab extra to itself. Uh, a magnet has a unified atomic conjugate fields where everything is operating in unison. I don't know if you know this or not, but it used to be a rule that when soldiers would cross a bridge, you know, they'd march in unison, up to the left, right, you know, they soldiers would, uh, you know, they're a bay, they're drill sergeant, they do everything the same, they'd all work in complete and total unison, which is definitive of what a magnet is, for example. When they w walk across a bridge, they were told uh, there's a specific name for it that they're given to uh, to break uh, formation where everybody's literally going left, right, left, right, and you have a hundred soldiers that are literally left, right. They're all doing everything in unison. It creates this multiplicative harmonic effect where bridges, uh, you know, start shaking violently, especially if it's a weak bridge, which a lot of them were back in the day. They're simple, hand-built bridges, so they would actually. Uh, known to uh, walk out of step with one another such that they wouldn't actually create this ab extra harmonic. And this is the exact same thing since a magnet is a qualitative object, not a quantitative object, where everything is working in unison and lockstep with everything else on the atomic scale, whether it be ferrite, samarium cobalt, neodymium iron boron, doesn't make any difference. Uh, so, magnet has unified conjugate fields, just like the soldiers marching across a bridge. A magnet, once again, does not emit anything, uh, nor does it emit magnetism. The conjugate field ab extra of the magnet is the field of influence of the ether. I actually typed in here upon the ether, but I just said that conventionally in typing up my notes here. You can't say upon the ether as if one thing is acting upon another because magnetism is just an as every field is, an ether perturbation modality. So it's a field of influence of the ether, exactly like a laser is, exactly like a black hole. All future technology will be point source field technology, where we actually have multiplicative harmonic field effects. This, by the way, is how anti-grav works. This is how lasers work. This is how magnetism works. Magnetism, once again, you can never understand magnetism without understanding that magnetism is the extrinsic dielectric field. It is actuality, where dielectricity is potentiality. Potentiality is inertial and counterspatial. This is the reason why the geometry of dielectricity is the hyperboloid. The reason why the geometry of force and motion, centrifugal divergence, and magnetism is the torus. This is the geometry of actuality. The after-effect necessitative resultant effect of this centrifugal divergence is, of course, the creation of space. Space is not a thing itself. The actual volume of the torus itself, the loss of energy inertia, manifests the negative image of potentiality. The negative image of potentiality is impotency, metaphysical and field impotency. The negative image of potentiality is impotency, and impotency is space. Space is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. What a magnet is is very simple. Mother Nature, as I've said humorously, not accurately, but humorously, you know, it's just a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet, hemp skirt. Only thing she does is pressure mediation, force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. She doesn't have a calculator. Everything is simplex, uh, constructive and destructive interference. Everything is simplex field pressure mediation. 
you have to understand what a point source object is. Yeah. And the fact that when they're working in unison, like in the case of a black hole, in the case of a laser, in the case of a magnet, are multiplicative field phenomena. Point source field phenomena always equal multiplicative effect. Once again, very, very important. You could wrap your brain around this very, very easily. Nobody on Earth is impressed by a 5-watt light bulb. I don't know if you've ever seen one. It's basically just for reading up close. Everybody on Earth is impressed by a 5-watt laser. Not only that, they're freaking dangerous. Nobody on Earth is impressed with a... Before it gets uh, turned into a magnet, it's quantitatively 100% identical. Nobody's impressed by that. Yeah. You magnetize it and you get everything working in unison. It basically becomes a field laser. Then everybody's impressed by it. There's not a person on this earth that isn't impressed by a powerful magnet. They can be dangerous too. They're dangerous like a laser. I got a monster magnet in the basement. It's dangerous. When you walk past it, I kid you not, you can feel, because we actually have these things, uh, these receptors in our nose and our lips that are highly receptive to magnetic field. You can walk past the thing and feel it. You get your hands around that and you like get it close to a refrigerator door or something and it goes, shoop, it'll break your fingers off. It's dangerous, exactly like a 5 volt. Nobody's, before that thing becomes a monster magnet, nobody on earth is impressed by it or afraid of it. But once it be does become a magnet, everybody's impressed by it and everybody's afraid of it. Same thing with a 5-watt light bulb versus a 5-watt laser. Not that this is a 5-watt. This is like 150 milliwatt. This is nothing. This is just a red laser pointer. That sucker is dangerous. I will not show that in the video. It would probably damage, destroy my camera sensor. So this explains what magnetism is in simple. Magnetism is actuality. Dielectricity is potentiality. The loss of potentiality is the manifestation of actuality. Mother Nature is really, really simple. It's just that human beings are really, 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 really ignorant. But hopefully humanity progresses some before it destroys itself, which I doubt will be the case, but we shall see. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'm the first person on Earth to, and I don't think you've, you think that's egotistical or you don't agree, I don't care. It's a fact. First person on earth to understand what magnetism is, what a field is. And if you ever want to contact me, my email's in the description below. Any donation is always warmly welcome. But I'm proud to be the first person on earth to understand what magnetism is, to explain it in simple terms that basically anybody could understand. Any donations always warmly welcome. Or you can just email me telling you don't agree. But if you can ever email me don't agree, give me evidences. But nobody ever has and nobody ever will. <laughs> they'll just like, uh, sometimes they'll just email me like, I don't agree with you. I, I don't have any reasons why. I just I don't agree. I just think you're wrong. It's like, well, that's good. That's not very helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week. Lux et veritas.